Hi, I'm Paul Brody. Mitch is behind the camera. We're in my shop once again. Welcome. We're working on a front brake for an Aramaki race bike. And when we left off last time, we had glued on this piece here. This is holds on the, on the torque stage. And I did a little bit of Bondo in here. You can see how this is all smoothed out. And then I also angled this. Those are the three Allen screws, which I talked about to help make that even stronger. I used the paint that I got from Home Depot. When you spray it on, it's a gray. It gets kind of shiny. So you'll notice this is kind of a, a matte finish. So what I did, I took some scotch bright. I dulled it down and then I took a bit of polish. You can use whatever kind of polish you want and then it kind of brings it up slightly. So that's how I get that antique looking finish. See where the air goes in right there? It's, it's got a, a pretty good shot and this is angled. So I think that's better than just having that straight. So the air doesn't just hit a wall. It at least angles in. I also made up a, a linkage here. These are little, little bits of, of bronze. And then I took an Allen screw, a stainless steel Allen screw. I had to take a few thou off to match the size of the hole, but that's a, that's a pretty nice fit now. There's, maybe a thou clearance there. It, it's adjustable. This is a piece of shrink tape. Let me show you what I did here. I thought that worked out pretty good. I didn't want to have to thread a rod on my lathe because this is only basically 3 16 rod, but I got a piece of shrink tubing and it fits over there really nicely and it hides all the threads and it's kind of a, a dull black. I like that. These here, these are the other are cams uh, for the brake. So what I did, I wanted to say, wait, I drill the hole down to about where my thumbnail is. Also drill the hole there, say 42 grams. And on the stock brake, the stock Honda brake, these are the, I call these the brake arms. That's where the spline goes in. So what I did is, I'm making my own brake arm, so I cut a spline. That's the first thing we're gonna do today is we're gonna match the spline. It's a, a 31 spline, so it really is an odd number of degrees. It works out to 11.613 degrees. So we'll go over to the mill now and we're gonna make a spline in this piece of metal here to match this spline. Can you see this? I sharpened up a piece of tool steel. It's got one point, so it's a single point tool. And I have to put that aiming, aiming towards me, and then I move the piece into the tool. And then it takes a cut, and then I, I turn it. So I gotta show you this. I made up a, a piece of cardboard, and it's got all of the, all of the cuts I have to take. So each cut is 11.613 11, 11 degrees. So you have to change that into minutes. So it's 11 degrees, 37 minutes. Because on the dial here, it's in minutes. Do you see here how it goes from, it go, starts at zero? It goes up to 60, 60 is the next number. So you have to, have to dial in, in in degrees and 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 the minutes so it's a little bit a little bit technical but I'm putting some some cutting oil down there so on this operation there's no there's no noise really there's no sparks it's not exciting like watching a chopper being built so here's a cut that's one cut so now I turn it I'm going 11 degrees and 37 minutes. So there's my 37. So that's my second cut. Now it's 30, it's, it's 23 and 14. So I keep on going like that.
Okay. Oh, look at that. There's a fit. So what we're going to do now is to go over to the bandsaw. I'll mark out a shape of the arms. And we've got some machining to do. We get to switch on some machines now. Not just be quiet. I have a friend in the shop. This is one of my peacocks and he hasn't been eating. So he's a little bit sick right now. So he's staying warm and I'm feeding him sugar and water because he has no appetite. I scribed the circle. You can see the, see the shiny mark there. So I'm gonna, actually let's make it an inch. I guess this is about an inch. So if I draw a line on either side. And these two arms aren't quite the same. They're similar, but not quite the same. And then there has to be an Allen screw that goes in here. There's gonna be a slot. So this gets cut off. Maybe I'll leave a little bit extra on there. Let's cut it off right about there. And so this metal that I'm using here, it was a bicycle fixture for years and then it, it didn't get used anymore. So it's, it got taken apart. And now the metal is being used for a, a race bike part. It's pretty cool. Let's go mill some flats, save some weight, make a little scoop with a ball end mill and things like that, okay? Over to the mill. I've got a really sharp end mill, M20, so I'm gonna be milling in metric. So I've got a little height block sitting on top here and I'm lining up my felt pen mark. Doesn't have to be super accurate, but there we go. Gonna go down just a touch. There we go. That was a touch. There we go. I can polish that a little bit later. A little 5 sixteenths ball end mill. See how it's got rounded? Goes in the collet. Let's make a line. I think, I think we'll go up to there. That looks okay. And then a little bit inconsistent here, but you know, this is art in a way. Why don't we go to here? So I'm, I'm matching up the surface with the height block. That's what I'm doing. So if I do that the same on all of them, then if I go down the same amount, we'll be good. Let's start out at 50 thou. Oh, that's 100. Wow, that cut really quick. Okay, so that was a hundred thou cut. It's a little bit, a little bit rough. So I'm going to take another little cut. I, I kind of like how far down it went. So why don't we go to say one, one ten, and I'll take another cut. That looks fine. So let's do. Let's do all the rest of them now. We've got some scoops there. They add, they add a little bit of lightness, make it look a little, a little different, a little fancier. 
We're going to drill a hole now. We're going to drill a hole for the 6 mil Allen screw and, uh, and make a thread. So I'm going to mark from the end of the spline, right at the very end, and then I'm going to measure away. I'll get a bolt and just kind of estimate where it should be. So that's where we're starting from. So there's an Allen screw right there, so you can see where it's going to go. So right about there. That'll work fine. It's a little bit away from the spline. What they do sometimes is to put the screw so that it goes into the middle of the spline like that, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I'll space it away just a little bit. So I'll take a little measurement and transfer that over. So that's where the hole will go, right there. That looks like it's in the middle. So it's a six mil thread, so this is a five mil tap drill. So I need to drill halfway now with a six mil drill because that'll let the Allen screw go through before it starts to thread. So there's a six mil. So the tap, the six mil tap is going into the six mil hole. So it's gonna start perfectly straight into the five mil hole and make a thread. So that's why I didn't start the tap on the drill press. There's no need. And it's basically through. Yep. That's one done. It's fast. I copied the length of the slot, but I really, this slot needs to go right up to here. So I have to go back in the mill briefly. I can go right to there. We just make that go a little farther, that's all. So, last operation on the mill is to do the slot. So that's what we'll do. We'll We'll set it up. I've, I'll figure out what size. This one's going to be easy to do. This one here, going to need a longer cutter to go all the way. So let's see what we got. Well, oh, look at that. I haven't used that one for a very long time. And uh, oh, if I'm going to go in all the way, I have to go in a little offset. To go far enough. No, that, that'll work fine. That's a good little slotting saw. Okay, I think we're good to go. Okay, so I have to offset this now so that this doesn't hit that. Let's see what happens here. There's our two slots. They're, they're very, very narrow slots, which I like. I don't like big wide slots. Just needs a little bit of file up now, take off the burrs, and we have a couple a couple brake arms. Very nice. We're on the last stage of, of the front brake. What we're gonna do now is to assemble it. This is the backing plate. This is the inside of the backing plate, and this is where the I've got the new linings put on. These are those Feroda linings. They're the green ones from England. 
they might have asbestos in them, I don't know. I got some white lithium grease. I use it on bicycles a lot. And the hard part is to, is to get the, the brake shoes on and the springs. So we'll see how that goes. I don't want excess grease in here because if it gets on the linings, that's not good. These are the springs. I don't think it matters which goes where. So this has to stretch out and then they have to go down at the same time, more or less. There we go. I've got a plastic rubber hammer. This is the harder side. I'm just wiggling it a little bit. There we go. Yeah, that was definitely easier than what I remember before. So this is a, a twin leading shoe front, front brake. That is what this is called because it's got the two shoes and they both lead. You can have a single leading shoe and there's only one cam. This has the two cams. So that's why it's called a twin leading shoe. So now we put in these spaces. This adds up to about a, a 32 thou. I was just watching a video on YouTube recently and it, it was the Norton factory going back into the 50s, I believe, and, and they were showing how the race bikes were prepared and they talked about the space and it was 30 thou. So that was like a, a confirmation. See here how I spread it apart and put it in. Even though this hub is 52 years old, I think it has very, very little use which is nice. It hasn't been used much or abused because often when you get this old stuff, man, you can have some problems, especially if it's been abused. So there's that and two cotter pins. We'll put them in like that. So what I'm going to do now is to grab a large vernier and we're just going to see how much extra there is here on the brake shoe as compared with the drum. So let's see what it says. So it's 7.873 and the linings are, you can see how much light, okay watch. It's over 100 thou larger, 7.995. So we have to take off about 50 thou aside. This is what's gonna happen. We're gonna hold it in the lathe like that. This has to run true. That gets bolted on. We put some spaces in there and then we, we clamp this down so that this doesn't move. So let's just see how far out we are here. Okay, so we're out six, seven thou. We're gonna put on the four jaw. We're gonna do a good job here. Have the four jaw chuck on and we have to dial it in. So when the needle goes clockwise, that means that the shaft is coming towards me. So I have to push the shaft out. So see that? That's kind of the high point. So I put can you see it? See the needle moving? And then I go to the other side. Well, here, let me, let me get a little bit more tension here. There you go, you can see how far it's out. So that's the high point there, sort of. So we press in, then we go to the other side. And as you release, the needle swings clockwise. So if you're quick, this doesn't take too long and you make it perfectly accurate, which is what we want. 
So I've gone from 60 thou down to very little. And you make it as tight as you feel you need to. Okay, so that's good. That is basically very good. So there goes the backing plate like that. And it's going to rest up. See how this part of the backing plate is going to rest up, rest up against the chuck. Then we put the spaces on. We've got a carbide tool bit. Okay, we're, we're going to take the first cut. I'm a little bit nervous here, to be honest, because I hope everything goes right, nothing goes wrong. So I'm going to take small cuts, probably 10 thou at a time. And we've got a vacuum here to take off the, off the dust or whatever comes off. So we've got a slower speed. We'll see how this works and we've got the feed engaged. So here we go. Oh. Okay, look, I want to show you something here. You can see, see how it's touching here, but it hasn't been cutting here. Well, I'll, I'll make some marks here and then you can see as it comes down. Is it the same? This one seems to be cutting most, most of it. So the shoes were pretty good to start with. It does look like it's cutting. Anyway, that just shows us where it's not cutting. So all those felt pen marks I made, they're all gone now. So these shoes are basically arced. So what that means is, is, is there's contact for the whole shoe. It's just that we aren't down to size yet. So we'll do another cut and then we'll take a measurement. We're going to take another cut of 5 thou and then we'll take it out and we'll check it because then I think it's done. So there's the 5 thou cut. And that held perfectly. It never, never came loose or slipped or anything. That was good. Okay, let's go check. That's a pretty good fit. That's more or less parallel. I can always fiddle around with it later. This is that linkage I made. So what we'll do is to put the first one in and then we have to move the screw so that, that the holes line up. That seems to line up pretty good. There we go, look at that. So this is, okay, the brake lever and the cable bolts to here. That's, that's where the cable stop is. So when, when I pull the brake, that's what happens. So doing that, you see how it opens the shoes? That's how it works. So this is where the shims come out now. There we go. So one set of shims. Two set of shims. Okay, so it fits in. There we go. And look at that. So here it is. All the bearings are mounted in. And we spin it. Oh, look at that. It's got some friction, doesn't it? Those are those green linings 
because on the green linings, it's a racing lining. It tends to be a little bit grabby. You have to be careful when you apply the brake. So that's basically what a twin leading shoe brake looks like that's been modified. Good linings. Hope you've enjoyed watching this. Hope you learned something. See you next time. Stay safe. Thank you.